Chapter 261 In a world brimming with extraordinary abilities and spiritual energy, a powerful being named Yuziyu has created a mystical fruit known as the Light Fruit by condensing his own essence. This fruit contains an immense amount of spiritual energy and power, offering extraordinary effects to those who consume it. Over time, this miraculous fruit began to spread widely in the human world. Whether it was a third-order mutated beast or a human, Anyone who ate the light fruit could immediately ascend to the transcendent fourth order. The appearance of this fruit inevitably sparked a series of struggles and conflicts. Neither humans nor mutated beasts wanted to miss the opportunity to become stronger. Half a month later, in a human city, there were recent reports from the Misty Mountains about a competition, where the reward for the first place was an elemental fruit. However, whether this is true or not remains uncertain, as reporters continue to follow the event. On the large screens and crowded areas, images of the light fruit have been displayed. Perhaps this is an image or video that the divine tree actively sent to them. At a certain mansion, Longer was being trained by his grandfather. The old man stood on high, while Longer stood below, surrounded by swirling dust. Longer, with blood-red hair reaching down to his waist and a muscular, toned body, said, I just finished my training. The old man narrowed his eyes and said, You've heard about the competition in the Misty Mountains, right? With your unrivaled strength at the Third Order, do you have the confidence to take the first place? After hearing this, Longer scratched his head and said regretfully that they were not from Misty Mountain, expressing his disappointment. As soon as these words left his mouth, his grandfather rushed over and delivered a devastating punch almost causing Longer's eyes to pop out. The old man yelled, You fool! Isn't it enough just to participate? The grandfather pointed at Longer's face and shouted loudly, Even while we're speaking, who knows how many people are already rushing to the Misty Mountains? Even if you have to sign a contract, it doesn't matter. Once you reach the Fourth Order, even if you don't return, you'll still be able to protect the Long family for a hundred years. And that was also the only way for Longer to protect those he needed to safeguard. Hearing these words, Longer's face fell, realizing the truth in his grandfather's words. He knelt down and said, Grandfather, I understand. He then boldly declared that he had always longed to fight against other powerful warriors. After years of martial training, his strength was sufficient, and now it was time for Longer to test the limits of his abilities. Seeing this attitude, his grandfather was pleased and nodded in approval. Meanwhile, at the observatory, a student was excitedly telling his teacher that he had seen a vast ancient forest on the moon, surrounded by dense mist. The teacher quickly scolded him, saying that he shouldn't be shouting such nonsense so loudly, especially since he had sneaked into the observatory through the back door. On the moon, the laurel tree was reporting to its master. Master, as of now, the number of participants in the competition has exceeded 2,000. In addition to those from the Misty Mountains, there are also hundreds of outsiders with transcendent third-order strength. Currently, they have all been accommodated at Ching Chong's immortal residence. The Divine Tree narrowed his eyes, realizing that the number of participants was far greater than he had anticipated. He wondered how many of the top 100 would be from the Misty Mountain, and what intrigued him the most was the ranking of the humans in this competition. Where would they end up? Time passed quickly, and another month went by. During this month, a large number of mutated beasts continued to gather in the Misty Mountains. Aki, from the Misty Mountain Air Squadron, had been working at full capacity during this period, constantly patrolling the skies to monitor and ensure the security of the area. Below, countless powerful mutated beasts from all over had arrived, roaring and shoving each other. Among them was a particularly formidable-looking creature, a mutated claw bear, with a belly emitting yellow lightning. When the humans saw it, they were filled with dread. This was a claw bear, an evolved species from the Kodiak bears of the island. Its strength was overwhelming, and if one failed to react quickly, they would be slashed in half on the spot. And standing on the back of this bear was a member of the Three-Eyed Tribe. Damn it! This sight caused the nearby experts to break out in a cold sweat. A creature as powerful as the claw bear was merely his mount. Did they still have any chance of victory? Suddenly, a large foot stomped the ground, crushing it beneath its weight, and a massive snow bear appeared. 
its bright eyes fixed intently on the claw bear. The claw bear immediately sensed the killing intent and returned the gaze. The onlookers remained silent, observing carefully, for the newcomer was no ordinary creature. It was the thunder bear of Misty Mountain, a colossal beast and one of their border guardians. Instantly, the two bears exchanged fierce, electrifying glances. Although the people around said nothing, they secretly hoped for a brutal fight, wishing that both terrifying beasts would injure each other, which would increase their chances of victory. The claw bear's entire body radiated spiritual energy, its eyes glaring menacingly at the approaching threat. The thunder bear of Misty Mountain was equally unyielding, growling fiercely with a menacing expression. Meanwhile, the three-eyed man remained completely indifferent, as if this situation had nothing to do with him. But, damn it, it turned out that the two beasts had just pulled off a move like brothers from another mother. The surrounding atmosphere suddenly brightened with this display of camaraderie, and the people almost fainted from shock. Seriously, what were these two bears doing? Then, another powerful figure emerged behind them, a purple tiger. As soon as it appeared, it commanded, move aside, humans. Although it didn't roar, its domineering and aggressive aura pressed down on the humans, making them feel overwhelmed. Even the seasoned warriors from Central Asia were astonished, realizing that this beast was the infamous dark tiger from the legends. Soon after, a snow fox appeared, gracefully perched on a rock with its two tails swaying elegantly. The fox exuded an extraordinary presence, and beneath it were other mutated beasts of Misty Mountain. The snow fox was indeed stunningly beautiful, but no one dared to consider it as a pet knowing full well that this creature was beyond their reach. Suddenly, the ground trembled violently. The people initially thought it was an earthquake, but it wasn't. A titan emerged, towering several tens of meters high. Each step it took caused the ground to quake, and any careless movement could result in casualties. Once again, the humans were confronted with yet another legendary race. Damn it, they had decided to participate in this competition despite anticipating difficulty, but it seemed that the challenges were far greater than they had imagined. And at this moment, Longer, the pride of the Long clan, began to sniffle, thinking, Grandfather, I'm sorry for letting you down. A muscular man standing next to him remarked, It seems like all the Titans have gathered here. Looks like we don't stand a chance, huh? He then turned to Longer and asked if the kid was here to compete or just to observe. Before Longer could respond, the man continued talking. Looks like you've only reached the transcendent first order. This place is very dangerous for someone like you. He then immediately bent down, leaned in close to Longer's ear, and whispered that he should hand over some spirit stones, and in return, he would protect him. Longer stared at him as if he were one of the thugs from the neighborhood, and coldly declared, I think you'll be the one to die here before I do. The big guy, his pride wounded, angrily retorted, You brat, are you looking to die? How dare you look down on me? But just at that moment, the sky tore open, a bright crack forming and expanding, accompanied by the sound of shattering glass. End of chapter 261